and a Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Assemblies. Today is the uh, eighth day of the 11th month of the year 5779, best as we can call it. Now, I know there's people don't quite agree on the exact year, and that's fine. Uh, nobody knows for sure. It could be off as much as even 200 years. So good to know, but as we see it and discern it and have studied it out, it again is the eighth day of the 11th month of the year 5779. And we also go by the full moon as the new moon. So again, you might see us off. So, and it's a matter of opinion. I'll tell you this, there's not enough evidence in scripture alone to say that that is 100%. But I think the scripture clearly says in Psalms 81 verse three, that blow up the trumpet or the ram's horn in the new moon at the full moon on our solemn assembly. And I believe that applies to uh, the full moon being the new moon. Uh, also, there's many other things in scripture. You need to go watch our uh, new moon according to scripture to see what we believe. Again, not saying that we are got everything figured out and that we're 100% right on everything. We're just fully convinced of how to keep the calendar in that fashion, and that's what we're doing. Well, today we're going to continue the teaching, the expository teaching, of the book of Judges, which remember the word Judges could have been translated deliverers, okay? So by them judging Israel according to the law, that was to help deliver them, you know, to the kingdom of, of Yahuwah or Yah, okay? And again, we believe that the pronunciation would be uh, closer to Y-H-U-H or Y-H-W-H, which would be pronounced Yahuwah. Some spell it, put a W in there if they think it's Y-H-W-H, -H, but it still comes out in the pronunciation the same, Yahuwah. Okay, so we just believe that when you go to the oldest known form of Hebrew or from the Semitic people, we have those consonants that carry their vowel points with them versus the vowel points that are added in what is known as modern Hebrew or Babylonian Hebrew. Okay, so there's reasons for it being called Babylonian Hebrew because it really doesn't appear until after the Babylonian captivity. Okay, so we are fully concerned as Yahuwah, so I'm going to teach Yahuwah in the Old Testament. We talk about the Holy Spirit or the Ruach Kakadesh, which again we don't believe is Jesus. You know, I, I hear a lot of people out there that are teaching that Jesus is the only God that we ever heard from. Well, I don't think that that makes sense in the entirety of the scripture. You disagree with me? I still love you and look at you as brethren as long as you're keeping the law or the Torah. Okay. And I, and I don't want to dispute you on these issues. I'm just proclaiming what I believe to be true. And I don't believe at all that back here when we see the angel of the Lord, okay, and I see a lot of people's coming against me on this, and, and they'll say maybe they're not, and they're just putting, and that's good. I mean, if you're just putting up what you're fully convinced of, I support that, okay? Don't support that I, don't, doesn't mean I fully agree, okay? I think the angel of Yahuwah here that's written in, the, in your King James is the angel of the Lord is the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh in Hebrew. And he's the one that makes this. You know, they'll, they'll say, well, angel. And they always try to pack this in and say an angel has to be an angelic being. And that's not so, though. True meaning of the word that's translated angel in English, either from the Hebrew or from the Greek New Testament, would be messenger. The meaning would be messenger. So I don't believe that our Messiah is an angel like Gabriel at all. But I do believe he's definitely a messenger, especially once he gets that Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit that remains on him after baptism or at baptism. Okay. And there's a lot to understand with that. I mean, every prophet had that same spirit come upon them. The only difference was is it didn't remain upon them. It would come to them. You know, David said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Or the not take not your ruach hakadosh or your spirit from me, okay? And that didn't mean that he had the spirit on him continually. That just mean that he was coming to David as he was all the other prophets, and he was 
saying, thus saith Yahuwah, okay? He was delivering a message, so by definition, he would be Malach in Hebrew, okay? And so that's what I'm saying. So it's cl perfectly clear, and I do not agree that Yahushua or Jesus or Yeshua existed as an, in an entity prior to him being born in Bethlehem, okay? He was born of the seed of David. What does that mean? Well, it means through his mother's lineage, which, you know, we understand. She was of the tribe of Judah. That's how he came down. But he also was of the seed of David in another way, that Ruach that David said, don't take, that, don't take away from me. Okay? That spirit that came down upon him, that's how he becomes son of David, son of, and all these different things. Now, obviously, physically, he is that too. I'm not at all taken away from the idea that he is not the physical son of David because he's born of a woman, okay? So don't want to spend all my time on that. I want to jump into this teaching, but you'll know where I'm coming from as I go along, okay? So we're going to, we're in chapter 7 of the book of Judges, and then Yeb, 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 Yerub, 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 or that's how it would be pronounced. I'm stuttering on it this morning. Forgive me. Yerubabel, it would say Jerubabel in, in the English, but Yerubabel, who is, uh, is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up. So it's, it's explaining here, Yerubabel, who is Gideon. So we don't get those entities confused as we go along. Yerubabel, who is Gideon. And all the people that were with him rose up early and camped, says pitched in the King James, beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. Okay, And Yahuwah said to Gideon, the people are with you, the people that are with you are too many for me to give the, Mid the Midianites into their hands. At least Israel vaunt themselves, or, you know, they have pride against me, saying, mine own hand has saved me. Okay, so that's what he's saying here. He's not going to allow all the children of Israel to go up against the Midianites. He's going to separate out and just have some, so that there's no doubt that it was the, the hornet or the Ruach HaKadosh that fought before him, before them. See, what you have to really understand and get here. Okay, is that when the when it says thus saith Yahuwah, he has his Malak or messenger, the Ruach Hakadosh, there standing in the gap delivering the message. Okay, there's only one God, Most High Elohim. Okay, or Elohah. Okay, there's only one of them, but that does not mean that his Ruach or his spirit, okay, is not part of him. Okay, so that's where you get messed, you get all confused here. You know, in that sense, they are one, but that doesn't mean that there's not a Ruach HaKadosh and that it's not Elohim. Okay, so let's not get confused in the, in the situation. So again, we're not, so Yahuwah is not, he, want, he wanted uh, Israel to go against the Midianites, but he didn't want all of Israel. He's going to separate them off so that they could see that it was through his power, which is the Ruach HaKadosh, that they were uh, overcome. Verse 3, now therefore to go to proclaim in the ears, okay, now therefore go to, and so he's telling uh, Gideon here, go proclaim in their ears or speak for the Ruach to the people. Of the people saying, Whosoever is fearful, okay, and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there return of the people twenty and two thousand that were remain that remained, and there remained ten thousand. So twenty two thousand people right off the bat went home because they were afraid. That means what? They didn't have enough faith to go up against the, the Midianites. And they didn't want those people that were afraid to take 
credit, you know, for going in. And again, this all credit goes back to, to, to the Most High through his hornet or his Ruach HaKadosh. Okay. So 10,000, 22,000 went home. More than twice as many went home as what remained. And Yahuwah said unto Gideon, again, through the Ruach, he didn't speak to them. No one's ever heard his voice or seen his form at any time. The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will test them, for there shall be, for you, test them for you there at the water. And it shall be that of whom I say unto you, this shall go with you, and the same shall go with you. And of whomsoever I say unto you, this shall not go with you, the same shall not go. Okay, so he's going to separate them out a little bit more, again, to show the power of the Most High through his Ruach HaKadosh, or his hornet. Okay, so he brought down the people unto the water, and Yahuwah said unto Gideon, again, through the Ruach, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongues as a dog lappeth, him shall you set by himself. So the ones that got down on their four on their hands and knees and lapped like a dog out of the water, he said to set them aside. Okay? And the number of them that lapped putting their hand to the to their mouth were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink the water, drink right out of the water like an animal or dog would. And Yahuwah said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you. Okay, so the one that got down and drank like a dog, and deliver the Midianites into, thy, into your hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took food or, provinc or victuals or provincials and their ham and their horns, okay, which could, would have been their uh, ram's horn or shofar, and he set all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent and, re and retained those 300 men and the host, okay, or the army of the Midianites was beneath was beneath him in the valley. So they were up on the mountain, they were looking down, and they could see the Midianites. And it came to pass the same night that Yahuwah said unto him, again, through his Ruach, I want to emphasize that, that's why so many people don't understand, he had his spirit, his Ruach that went out before him, that communicated for him no one's heard Yahuwah or seen his form at any time and, and the Ruach said for Yahuwah arise get you down unto the host for I have delivered it into your hand but if you fear to go down and go you with Pura Fura thy servant down to the host and you shall hear what they say and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down into the host. So he's telling them, if you're still afraid, I'm going to send you another message here, and, and you're going to not be afraid. Because remember, he asked for a sign earlier uh, for the fleece to be wet and then not to be wet, you know. And so here's what the he's saying. But if you're still afraid, I'll give you yet another message. Uh, but if you fear to go down, go you with Fura your servant down to the host and you shall hear what they say and afterward talking about the Midianites shall your hands be strengthened to go down into the host then went he down with Fura so obviously he was still afraid his servant into the outside of the armed men that were the, in the army or the host and the Midianites and the Alamakite, Amalekites I'm sorry Amalekites, and all the sons of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for the multitude. So there's so many of them you couldn't even count them. And their camels were at, without number. You couldn't number them. As, as the sand by the seaside for a multitude. We know when he's talking about that, he said the Israel would be like that. They'd be like the stars of the sea of the heavens or the Shamiim, and they'd be like the sands of the, of the seas. So verse 13, and when Gideon was come, 
Behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley. And a cake of barley is what they would offer as a burnt offering to Yahuwah on a regular basis. Okay, A cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came into a tent, and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along, or lay flat, knocked the tent down. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else, okay, except the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for unto his hand hath Elohim, this word God in your King James, it should have been translated Elohim, delivered Midian and all the host. Now, Elohim is a plural word. Whether any of us want to admit that or not, I am on the end of it in English represents plurality. And so Elohim here is both the Ruach, is the Ruach that's doing it, and he's doing that by the order of the Father. So it's plural, both of them. Okay? So verse 15, And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and in the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the army of Israel, and said, Arise, for Yahuwah hath delivered unto your hand the army of Midian. So now, is just as Yahuwah had said through his Ruach, now uh, Gideon had the faith it took to go down and do what Yahuwah had told him. In other words, to allow the Ruach to fight for him. Verse 16, and he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he kept the, and he put a trumpet, and again, to his lips, in every man's hand, okay, with the empty pitchers and lamps, or torches, within the pitchers. And he said unto them, look on me, and do the same, okay? And behold, when I came to the outside of the camp, it shall be that... As I do, so shall you do. So he goes, watch me and do as I do. Verse 18. When I blow with the trumpet, or the ram's horn, I and all that are with him, with me, then blow ye your trumpets, as on every side of, side of all the camp, and say, the sword, and, that, and the word the sword is italicized here. That means that, it, it was, that it's uh, added. But it's added as a good ad because it said, and the sword of Yahuwah and of Gideon. Well, what is the sword of Yahuwah? What is he talking about here? He's talking about the Ruach HaKadosh. That's the sword or the power. That's why when we look in the book of John, we say, you know, you need two swords. You know, he's, he's letting you know you need the sword of the Messiah and you need the sword of, which is the Ruach. It's the sword of Yahuwah. Okay. This stuff is not rocket science. But if you've been taught a pre or you know a preconceived idea for years, which believe me, that's not a new idea that you, Jesus or Yahushua has existed from the beginning. That is actually a Roman Catholic doctrine that fits into Trinitarianism or oneness. Okay, so argue with me if you will. It is what it is. That is not how it works. Okay, the Scripture is pretty clear on what it's saying. So there, this is nothing else. In other words, nothing else is needed except the sword of Gideon. Okay? So and that was backed up by the sword of Elohim. Okay? And uh, so it said, so that's what we know what we're talking about here. Where did I where was I just in verse? Ah, oh, lost my spot. Just a second. Bear with me. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon. I saw the sword of Yahuwah, of Elohim, not of Yahuwah earlier here. Hmm. There it is. I was in verse 20. I'm sorry. But rather take a little bit of time there to get back in the right spot than to start out and confuse everything. Okay, so verse 20 says, he says, 
because before he said the sword of Gideon, now he adds in the sword of Yahuwah, or Elohim, a sword of Elohim, no, of Yahuwah, okay? The trumpet is there right in their right hands to blow with all, and they cried. All of them cried in simultaneous, the sword of Yahuwah and of Gideon. And again, we know the sword of Yahuwah is the Ruach HaKadosh. That's how Elohim that does all these things. 21. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the army ran and cried and fled. And the 300 blew the trumpets, and Yahuwah set every man's sword against his fellow, even though out, out all of, okay, against his fellow, and that in his fellow there would have been against each other, even through out, even throughout all the host or the army and the host fled because so in other words they went after that army and that army of the Midianites fled to Beshit Ta in Zerath and if I pronounce that wrong I never claim to be an expert on pronouncing all these and to the border of Abel Mihala unto Tabath Tabath and, and the men of Israel gathered or uh, were surrounded. Now listen, and the men of Israel were surrounded together. Oh, I'm sorry, were called together. Let me get this right. And the men of Israel were called together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of all Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. So more of the Israel saw what was happening. And they came down and they went after the Midianites, okay? And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters under Beth Barah and Jordan, or Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters under Beth Barah and Jordan. And they took two princes. And this princes here would have been two elders uh, of, of tribes of the Midianites, two elders of the Midianites, Orb or Oreb and Zeb. And they slew Oreb upon at the rock of Oreb and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb and pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. End of chapter 7. Chapter 8. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast you served us th this way, that you called us not when you went, went to fight with the Midianites? Why didn't you call the whole tribe of Israel? Well, because Yahuwah through his Ruach told him not to. Okay? The glory went to Yahuwah, not them. And they did contend with him sharply. And he said unto them, What have I done in, compa in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abaz Abazur? Elohim, verse 3, Elohim hath delivered unto your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated or subsided toward him when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he, and he went across Jordan to the Jordan River, and the 300 men that were with him faint yet pursuing them. In other words, they were tired but still pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Sukkoth, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that I fo that follow me, for they be faint or weak. They were very tired. They'd ran out of energy. They needed more fuel. And I am pursuing after Zeba and Zelman, Zelman Zelmanah, king of the Mid kings of Midian. Six and the princes, okay, or the elders of Sukkoth, said, are the are the hands of Zeba. And Zelmana, Zelmana, now in your hand, 
that we should give bread unto your army? And Gideon said, Therefore, when Yahuwah hath delivered Zeba and Zelmana unto mine hand, then I will tear your, tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with the briars. <clears throat> and he went up from there to Penuel and spake unto them likewise. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, or in triumph, I will break down this tower. Okay. 10. Now Zeba and Zelmana were in Kekor, or Karkor. And their army with them, and fifteen thousand men, all that were left of the armies of of the sons of the east, or the Ben of the east. For there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew the sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in the tents on the east of Noba, and Yag Biha. And smote the host, or the army, of the army was secure. For the army was secure. And when Zeba and Zelman, Zelmana fled, he pursued after them, and took two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zelmana, and routed all the host, or all the army. It says discomfort in the King James, again, and, and the host, but it means army. And Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up, and caught a young man of the men of Sukkoth, and inquired of him, and he described unto him the princes of Sukkoth, and the elders thereof, even three score and, and, and seventeen men. Three score would be sixty, so that would be... Seven, uh, 77 men. And he came into the men of Sukkoth and said, Behold, Zeba and Zelmana, with whom you did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zelmana now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto your men that are weary? In other words, he's saying, By what authority do you ask me to feed your men? Okay. Verse 16, And he took the elders of the city, and the thorns of the wilderness, and the briars, and with them he taught the men of Sukkot. And he beat down the tower of Penuel, and he slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zeba and Zelmana, What manner of men were they whom you slew at Tabor? And they answered, As you are, so were they. Each one resembled the sons of a king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother, as Yahuwah liveth. If, he, if you had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Yether, his firstborn, Up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Zeba and Zelmana said, Rise you and fall upon us, for as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zeba and Zelmana and took away the crescents. So these were like uh, crescent moons that they had, okay? And he, he took it away from them that were on their camel's necks, okay? See, these are one of this is one of the things that I cited. Obviously, it's not anything that thus saith the Lord, but or Yahuwah. But what this is going on here is that these guys had these crescent moon uh, amulets that they wore around their necks, and you know that's not much different than what Islam and some of the other ones carry today to make me question, okay, whether the new moon was this crescent moon or something else. And I also knew that. We had a father of lights, okay? And this father of lights would not use darkness as a sign 
for the beginning of a month. You know, it makes much more sense for that to be towards the end of the month. Okay, that dark of the moon or the middle. Okay, the middle of the month. So here we go. Kind of derailed a little bit, but I just, you know, it was here, so I had to highlight it. Verse 22, Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule you over us, both you and your son, and your sons are sons, okay, your Ben sons. Also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. Yahuwah shall rule over you, the Most High. I added the Most High there. 24, and Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that you would give me a give me every man the earrings of your prey. And this, this is in parentheses, so this was added to describe the earrings of the prey. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Okay, that means sons of Ishmael. Okay, and they had those crescent moons. And you see why I made the connection earlier with that. Now, does, does that mean that they're not sons of Abraham? Not at all. Ishmael, definitely a son of Abraham. Okay, firstborn son of Abraham on top of that. Okay, but these earrings, he asked for them. Okay, verse 25. And they also took away those crescent ambulance, amulets that were around the neck. And I would say these earrings were crescents as well. Okay. And they answered, we will, we will willing, we will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey or of, you know, those of his enemy. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars, okay, or pendants that could have been translated, and purple raiment or purple, purple clothing, which is a sign of kingship, that purple, that was on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were about their camels' necks. And Gideon made an ephod, okay, we all know what an ephod is, a priestly garment, okay, thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither, okay, a whoring after it. What does that mean? They went after this gold that came from those crescent earrings and pendants, and that were melted down and went after it as though it was another god, which thing became a snare unto Gideon also. Okay, I put it also in there. And to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the sons of Israel, or the Ben of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. Midianites, they never came back. And the country was in the quietness 40 years in the days of Gideon. Don't mean that they were every one of Midianites wiped out. It just means they didn't rise to any kind of power anymore after that. And Yeb and Yerubbabel, the son of Yoash, went and dwelt in his own city. And Gideon had three score, okay, and ten sons. And so that means 70 sons of his body begotten. So in other words, he had caused 70 sons to be born, for he had many wives, okay? And his concubine that was in Shechem, she also bare him a son. She wasn't his wife. She was like his servant, maidservant, whose name he, he called Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Yoash, died in a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Yoash, or sepulcher, <coughs> his father in Ophir, and the Abizarites. And, and it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the sons of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam. Okay? Balaam. Baal mean, meaning Lord, okay? 
I am, meaning more than one. Okay, so Balaam, many gods, went after many Elo, Eloa, or El, many Elohim. Okay, and made Baal Berith, Bel, Bel, Bel Berith, their Eloa, or I mean, or their Elohim. So they again turned away from Yahuwah and the Ruach Hakadosh and turned unto Baal, into many uh, masters. Okay, and made Baal Baal Berith, their Elohim. And the sons of Israel remembered not Yahuwah their Elohim, or Yahweh their Elohim, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their armies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Yerubbabel, namely Gideon, because that's who Yerubbabel is, is Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. Okay, so that was his basic reward for doing the good things for Israel, even though he did turned away from Yahuwah, you know, from because of what he had done with the gold that came from those amulets, those crescent shaped things. Okay? And that could be a shadow of Israel turning towards the crescent moon later on. I don't know. But I, that made me start to think of it. Okay? Chapter nine. And Abimelech the son of Yerubbabel, or Gideon, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed, okay, and which means, and spoke with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Speak, I pray you, in the ears of all the men of Shechem, whether it is better for you either that all the sons of Yerubbabel, which were threescore and ten, or seventy, Okay, persons reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Okay, talking about himself. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem. And all these words and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver, one piece of silver for every one of his, you know, for all the brothers of Yerubbabel, uh, which is, again, Gideon, of silver out of the house of Baal Bereth. Okay, so this is that Elohim that Israel had made their Elohim, wherewith Abimelech had vain or worthless and reckless persons which followed him. So they didn't do good by following him. Okay, Shechem. And he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew his brethren, the sons of Yerubbabel, three score and ten. He killed every one of his brothers. Persons upon one stone or spot, notwithstanding yet Yotham, the youngest son of Yerubbabel, was left. So he killed them all but one. Okay, for he hid himself. So he didn't kill 70. That would just meant there was 70 of them. And he killed every one he could get his hands on. But the youngest one had hid. And all the men of Shechem gathered together and all the house of Milo and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Yotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice, and cried, and said unto them, Listen unto me, you men of Shechem, that Elohim may listen unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign you over us. But the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor Elohim and man and go to promote over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come on you and reign with us. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to say something that's probably not wasn't obvious in what I said in the teaching. It's pretty obvious that how that Israel left 
Yahuwah is when they melted these crescent moons, these figures, these chain that was around their neck, their earrings, the chains around their camel's necks, which I believe all of them probably had crescent moons on them, that they've used that gold to fashion them a God, or them an Elohim, okay? And that Elohim was this God that they turned to, okay? And that's why, you know, he said there, you know, that if you listen to me, you listen unto Elohim, okay? Not that he was after the true Elohim, but this gold figure that came from those amulets that we just read about, okay? So I want to make that a little more clear so you can understand what's going on and how Israel had went after another Elohim. And what they did was no different than what uh, Aaron and the children of Israel did when they created golden calves, plural. You know, I know some places it's trans-singular, but it's plural because it was to represent the Most High, which no one seen his form or heard his shape, heard his voice at any time. And also the Ruach, that's why there were multiple, because that's Elohim, plurality, okay? And obviously there's one, only one uh, Eclid or Most High, which is Yahuwah, okay? But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a spirit or a ruach that goes out before him, a hornet that fights, whatever the name might fit. It's the same entity, okay? Verse 11, But I, the fig tree, said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness? Okay? Comparing himself to the fig tree, sweetness, which a lot of times uh, is also talking about... Uh, Israel, okay, the fig tree. Israel's representative is the fig tree. Verse 12, Then said the trees unto the vine, Come you and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my vine, which cheereth Elohim, and man, and go to, the, to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees unto the thorn bush, Come and reign over us. See, that's telling you a little bit more about this character that was reigning, that they had chosen as their king. <coughs> they had promoted a thorn bush instead of the true vine. Okay, and that true vine goes back to Elohim, which obviously Yahushua later, because the vine was, that Ruach had came down and came upon him. He said, I am the true vine. Okay, and so that's what he's talking about. That's a, that, that vine has many tentacles. And now because the spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh has came down on many, you know, that's how the vine continues. And we reside in the vine. Okay, and the root obviously is our Messiah that comes from the root of Yesi or Jesse. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my wine, which cheereth Elohim and man? and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said all the trees under the bramble, or the thorn bush. Now, the trees, again, here representing Israel, okay, physical, probably more than not, come you and reign over us. And the bramble, or the thorn bush, bush said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble, which is the thorn bush, and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now, therefore, if you have done truly and sincerely in that you have made a made Abimelech, okay, son of, uh, oh, my brain's not working here, Gideon, uses the name there that he was using, or Abimelech, same entity, okay? Now, therefore, if you have done truly in that you have made Abimelech, okay, a son of, a, of Gideon, king, and if you have dwelt with Urubabel, that's Gideon, and his tribe or family, his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, the deeds of his hands. For my father fought for you, 
and adventured and risked his life far or many times and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And, he, and you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons. That's talking about the bramble or the thorn bush that killed all the, those other, uh, the other three score and ten persons upon one stone or one spot. Now, that's as far as they knew. They didn't know that the youngest one had escaped, hid out and escaped. And have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant, not the son of his wives, king over them. That's why he's a bramble and a thorn bush over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If you have dealt truly and sincerely with Yerubbabel and with his house, his descendants, see, that should have rightfully took his place this day, then rejoice you in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. So, and this also shines a little light back on Abraham, okay, and his, and, a, and Hagar, okay, his servant, which his offspring w was Ishmael, okay, his firstborn son was Ishmael, but again, he wasn't from the bloodline of Israel, okay, so here, this, here we got, again, another bramble that they chose because he wasn't in the, the you know, he wasn't in the uh, bloodline of Israel at this time to rule over them, they had not chosen the right, rightly, and he had killed all the heirs, okay, Except one. Verse 20. But if not, let fire come out of Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem of the house of Milo and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and come and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Okay. And Yotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother because he already killed all of them but him. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, then Elohim sent an evil spirit, okay, an evil ruach, okay, between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dwelt treacherously with Abimelech. Now, you say, what does Elohim have to do with an evil ruach? Well, He's, he's, you know, when we talk about the Most High and his Ruach, they're over everything else, okay? And it, this plainly says Elohim in the beginning of 23, okay? I mean, what do we got to say about that? Let me tell you something. Those fallen angels still have to answer to the Most High, and sometimes through the Ruach, okay? Verse 24, okay? Okay? That the cruelly that the cruelly done to the three score and ten, or the sons of Yerubbabel, the Ben of Yerubbabel, might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brothers. And the men of Shechem set men in ambush, or liars in wait. The King James translates it for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that they by, they by them, and it was told Abimelech. And Gael, the Ben of Eber, Ebed, or the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went into the into Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went into the fields and gathered their vineyards, or they picked the grapes, and trod the grapes and made merry, or celebrated, drank wine, and went into the house of their Elohim, okay, which we already had pointed out a couple of times, and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. And, Ga and Gael, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem? that we should serve him. Is not he the son of Yerubbabel? And Zebulah, his officer, served the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to Elohim, people were under my hand. 
They said they wished to Elohim this people were under his hand. And then I would have removed Abimelech, and he said to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. And when Zebel, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gea, the, the Ben or son of Ebed, his anger was kindled or it burned. And he sent messengers, and this would have been Malak in Hebrew, okay? Or Malakim, if it's plural, okay? So understand what's being said here. You can't just decide how, which way you're going to apply things all the time. you got to apply them the same, okay? So be clear on what's going on. Okay, verse 31, and he sent Malachim, Malachim, or Malach, unto Abimelech, deceitfully, saying, Behold, Gael, the Ben of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shisham, and behold, they fortified the city against you, or, you know, they secured the city against you. Verse 32, now therefore, Arise by night, you and the people that is with you, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be that in, in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against you, then mayest you do to them as you shall find occasion. So he's given them authority. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shisham in four companies, or divisions, or whatever you want to call them. And Gea, the son of Ebed, or the Ben of Ebed, went out and stood on the entry, on the entering, or the entrance of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up, and the people that were with him from laying in wait, or they were in ambush position. And when Gaia saw the people, he said to Zebul, Zebul, behold, there come people down from the top of mount, of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. And Gaia spake again and said, see, there come people down by the, by the midi, the middle of the land and another company came along by the plain, and this should have been translated by the oak. I don't know why they translated it plain. Came along by the oak, meonanim, so it means that oak trees, there's more than one. By the plain, okay, or the oak of Milana, okay, Milanum. Then said Zebulul, Zebuel unto him, where is now thy boasting? Wherewith thou saidest, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Is not this people that you hast des despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gaia went out before the men of Shisham and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him. And many were overthrown and wounded even into the entrance of the gate. And Abimelech dwelled at Arama, and Zebuel drove out Gael and his brethren, and they that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass the next day that the people went out of the field, and they told Abimelech, and he took the people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field, and looked, and behold, the people were come forth out of the city, and he rose up against them, and smote them, and, Abed, and Abimelech, and the company that was with him, rushed from forward, and stood in the entrance of the, ga of the gate of the city, and the two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them. And Abimelech fought against the city all that day. And he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and scattered it with salt. And when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard that, they entered into 
a hold of the house of Elohim, Bereth. So that's telling you what Elohim it was. That's why it's small g here. This is that idol that they made with that gold from those amulets. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to the Mount Zalman, and he and all the people that were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What you have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold or to the chamber and set the chamber on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then went Abimelech to Zeb Thebes and besieged against Zebes and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and there fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower and Abimelech, and Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and approached the door of the tower to burn it with fire. And a certain woman cast a piece of millstone upon Abimelech's head and it and all to break his skull. So this lady broke Abimelech's skull with this millstone. This kind of reminds us of our Messiah saying it'd be better than a millstone be tied around your neck and cast into the deep. Not quite the same, but I could see it applying. Verse 54, Then he called hastily unto the young man, because he had led all Israel astray here, him and even uh, his father, as his armor bearer, and said unto him, Draw your sword and slay him, that men slay not of me. A woman slew him, and his young man thrust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, okay, they departed every man into his home. Thus Elohim, capital J, G, in your King James, thus Elohim rendered or stopped the wickedness of Abimelech which he did unto his father in slaying his seventy brethren, minus one. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did Elohim render or return upon their heads and upon them that came the curse of Yotham, the son of, of Yerubbabel, uh, or, you know, which we know who Yerubbabel is. Okay. We're going to stop right there on this teaching. This is almost right at an hour and exactly how long I'd like to have my uh, teachings. I'm going to do another teaching yet today and put it up later. I'm going to get this one posted first and I'll do one more and get it up sometime today later. May Yahuwah bless until we meet again. And as always, if you've got comments or concerns, you can contact us, questions, whatever. Even, you know, if you want to... Go at us with the scripture. We're welcoming that. You can go to Philadelphia Assemblies, plural, at gmail.com.